and we definitely play hot music. As I, I think I played a little bit of hot music at that time. Yes, indeed. Not a little bit. He played a lot of bit, Have to be and Tracy G. Like I said before, the young man is a pillar in the game. Anytime I see him when I come to the town, man, he's throwing a bunch of ideas of growth and community and, and opportunity and collaborative efforts. This is what this man has stood on for years since he started as an intern and soaked up the game at Soul Beat. And he, ain't, he didn't leave Oakland. He kept it in Oakland and kept building in Oakland. And so that for that reason, we got him on the show today, the one and only Chuck Johnson, man. Give it up for Chuck Johnson. What up, Chuck? Okay. okay. What's poppin'? What's hey, poppin'? Chuck. What's poppin'? Look at, Chuck, look at what Sway. up, baby? Another, another incredible introduction. What's up, Sway? How you doing, lady? <laughs> what up, Chuck? <laughs> come on, yeah. man. Hey, listen, yeah. if you go to the town, man, anytime you come to uh come to the Oakland, man, just mention Chuck Johnson's name and you're going to find a connection to somebody. That's a guarantee. Respect. Right, Chuck? Respect, man. Absolutely, Respect, man. man. I, I, this this is it, man. This is all I've ever do, man. The big homie Sway was popping, man. Absolutely. We're going to do it again in person, man. But I thought it was important for us to yeah. um really talk about what today is. And I, I it, sometimes when you talk about history and, and folks aren't aware of it, it, it could be kind of kind of confusing because you, you can't really connect to it. And one way I like to talk about Soul Beat is it being the first, you know, black owned network in the country. So where people gravitate or they can relate to what um, uh, what BET has done. Imagine this being done before BET, correct, Chuck? That's correct, Sway. The best way I, I describe Soul Beat is it's been that hidden jewel that Russell Simmons knew about. It was that hidden jewel that Dolan Mike knew about, Jay Z knew about. It's again the the national but local connection to the culture. If you knew that you had to break your music in the West Coast, you had to come to Soul Beat. Uh, I can take you back to I say about 1987. Mm -hmm. 1987, Randy MC was out here uh, rocking with with Chuck Johnson. So the history goes like forever. I mean, shout out to Easy E. Just all the greats came through to Soul Beat, and then they took the energy that they got from the Bay Area and took it back home and and twisted it back up. And you know, the rest has been history. So Soul Beat has just been a pillar in the culture um, for those who came to came to the Bay Area. On Sway, tell me about the Gavin Convention. The Gavin oh. Convention. So, you know, the Gavin Report was a, a, a trade magazine. We speak on it right. a lot here, Chuck. We've done it before. In a trade magazine, what it was, imagine Billboard or or a magazines like that that kept track of mu that music, how music was being played on radio across the country, mainstream, college radio, so on and so forth. And in the early 90s, the Gavin Report, shout out to Timbisa and Shaka, shout out to Kelly right. Wu, um, Brian Sampson. The Gavin Report put on a big conference and everybody from all over the world came, man. And then Sobe, what was that like for you, bro? What was that like for Sobe at that time? At that time, it was it was just a perfect storm because, again, we got a chance to have great content recorded. Again, we built new relationships with whether it's an independent artist or a national artist. And even for me as a, a young dude, you got to remember also, this is the early 90s, so that was when hip-hop was really making its mark, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, shoot, I, I remember when Biggie and, Biggie and uh, Puppy was out here at the Henry J. Um, College Convention Center, Sway. Mm -hmm. So when they was getting their start, you know, they was coming out here networking. So it was it was just a melting pot of great times because we had a lot of artists at the time actually on major record labels. So, you know, the Bay had, had a thriving point with the, with the, um, with the component of hip-hop and beyond. But Sobe was just very unique because, hey, I was from East Oakland. Yeah. I got a shot to be on TV. And Come on. Um, so I have to sway. Tell, tell, watch this. I'm giving them the old school sway. Tell them about the Hip Hop Coalition. The Hip Hop Coalition. <laughs> so yeah, the Hip Hop yeah. Coalition. Hip Hop Coalition. Uh, okay, hip Hop Coalition is a coalition of just uh, DJs, uh, promoters, uh, you know, uh, people who was pushing culture forward that came together um, to just really ensure the thing with the Bay is when you talk about the hip hop coalition and, and, and all the different organizations, David Paul with the bomb magazine, you know, uh, uh, Davey D Tamu, you know, Siddiqui, mm. you know, Kim Collette, 
you know, all of the KB Kev, KZSU, Stanford, Heather, you know, all this stuff, KPFA, you know, yeah. all these different um community stations. We had to, Chuck, and you can speak to this. We had to mm -hmm. galvanize our sources because the Bay was just kind of like a smorgasbord. People would just come to the Bay and you eat up all this game, you get all this good food right. and all this nourishment, and then you take it somewhere else and then you mm -hmm. didn't get credit to the Bay. So be help trigger something you mentioned easy e and run dmc and all these guys when they came to town they had to go to soul beat first to even promote their concerts yeah, <laughs> sure. you know that's sure. so beat chuck i remember and i want you to talk about chuck johnson the 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 older chuck Absolutely. johnson because the, um but i remember heather and tracy too i was mm -hmm. you know we would watch soul beat on a local uh tv network right and you'll see linnell on there doing her show Ludell, <laughs> <laughs> what up, Ludell? Yes. I love Ludell, yo. You see Ludell. Ludell was on the chain <laughs> back then, too. But the thing that made so be special, Chuck, and I want to talk about this and the original Chuck Johnson, that a lot of platforms are missing today is the human interaction. Because, uh, say, for example, a lot of radio now, people pre record, they do what they got to do to fill up their content grids. And, but you're not right. hearing that human interaction. You, you're you not hearing what the pulse of the community has to say. You know what I mean? And Soul Beat allowed people to call in. This is what Lunell was talking about. Live on the air and say, hey, man, we got a problem. Or, you know, we got a problem in the lower bottoms, man. We got a lot of homeless people right. that's sleeping under the bridge, man. What are we going to do about that? Right, Chuck? Right. And, and, and that's right. what made Soul Beat such a important platform to the bay area and then it left but right. i want to talk about chuck johnson this chuck johnson the young chuck johnson came under the tutelage of the older chuck johnson but you two aren't related right <laughs> <laughs> yeah man uh it, it just, it's just how the game went his name is charles <laughs> edward johnson my name is charles edward johnson you know what and, uh, there's no relation at all crazy and uh yeah so what it was because on the real I, I just really was on the post of hip-hop at a very young age you know what i'm saying and then i actually went to school for uh television broadcasting and on the fluke i met chuck and it's just a trip because now it's just a trip that he gave me his business card i did the inter internship for a year it took a year i finally got my w-2 form thing going with him and, and there it was we saw we had the same name and um, I used to be just like anybody else, just watching Soul Beat. Because you got to realize, I'm going to say this out, out loud to the world. Soul Beat was like, I guess you can say the first Instagram or something, because it was live. It was it was no, it was like a five, no five second delay. You just had to really live it with the culture. And that was what was incredible was that they can call right up right now. They was going to say something like they love you or Say something the opposite. They had a chance to tell you that right then and there in real time. And, you know, shout out to Mr. Johnson because, again, he decided to have a black-owned network, kept it 100%, you know, what it was. It may not reach certain heights, but it, it, it was definitely a stable in the culture because, let's face it, you know, he got, you know, people like Viacom came to him at an early time, 1983, in fact, and he decided to kind of go his own path. So, it was important to to get his legacy understood. That's why I basically I'm gonna spend some time developing a documentary. But again, Chuck even had a life before he even came to Oakland in, in 1978. For like 25 years, he was in the culture. He was a like a radio DJ in Okinawa, Japan, in the 60s. To um, he was the head of the NAACP in San Diego at one time. And get this way, I don't know if you guys know, but he actually produced some of Dolomite movies, the old school oh, wow. Dolomite guys. I don't know wow. if you remember old school Dolomite. So more. he just has a long history of of, of, of of interest to the industry that's not re well known. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to take time to do this. And then the reality was is that I was coming up in the 90s, so I was right there in the post of the hip-hop community. And so when the opportunity came, he was like, man, I'm going to throw you on this TV show, figure it out. In less than a week, I became a hip-hop host. And I, my first show was with, with the Fugees, uh, uh, Simple E. She had the song called Play My Phone. 
and it was the uh, the coupe. Shout out to um, DJ Pam the Functionist. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, man, it, it's just a, it's a it's an intertwining story of my, myself and the hip hop culture. But of course, um, shout out to OG Chuck for twenty five years of entertainment bringing it to Oakland with Soul B. I love it, man. Today is Soul B Day. Oakland, stand up. If you grew up watching Soul B, 888-742-3345. We actually got Flash on the line from Oakland. Flash, Grand Rises. Hey, Flash. Flash, Flash you got us on mute or you eating grits? What you doing, Flash? <laughs> Actually, right now, I'm riding around in the town as we speak. So I'm okay. Okay. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Flash. Yes, sir. Talk about Soul Beat, Flash. Turn your radio down and talk in your phone. But talk about Soul Beat and its important stuff. Okay. Yeah, radio on Soul Beat, man. You can go to East My Mall. Well, they were inside East My Mall, and then they moved outside East My Mall. But it was just on blast from open. Man, major, major, major shot to, uh, to Al Ballard. That's what you know what I'm saying? We're doing those interviews. And uh, we used to have, you know, host him at the club at uh, Sweet Jimmy's in the complex back in the day. But, man, oh, yeah, uh, Billy Jam, I don't give a damn with the videos. I mean, it, you, to me, so be, you can actually go there. You know what I'm saying? You could be there. You could be a part of it. And not only that, I mean, it, it was just something that it was really Oakland's own music, entertainment. I mean, it had everything. I mean, it's funny because my grandparents would watch so be. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, I mean, it, it, it's a real major, it's Oakland's culture right there, live in the flesh. Like how you said earlier, before BDT, before MTV, you know, trying to portray black music. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it, everybody. I mean, you know, man, I went to Fremont High, you know, class in 1991. So, you know, everybody somewhat always talked about knowing Chuck Johnson, always gave praise to Chuck Johnson. I remember we was trying to... So Johnson is <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's kind of hard not to. I mean, it, every day they had something that was on. You know, it's funny because when I used to uh, uh, visit my relatives in Texas, we used to talk about uh, Soul Beat. They were like, man, what is that? I said, man, honestly, just black people in open on TV. For real. <laughs> That's For real. exactly what it was. <laughs> I like that description, man. Hey, man, <laughs> everything he's saying is so on point. And, and today we're talking about the first annual Soul Beat Day that's happening in Oakland. We got Chuck Johnson on here, Flash. Chuck, what can pe- are we going to be able to watch Soul Beat? You know, that's why everybody putting that on my back, man. And again, man, putting it out there right now, I'm at the holler at you about some uh, production. And it's, it's a great opportunity, man. You know, it's a great opportunity, man, to research such an important brand and take it beyond the Bay Area. You know, mm-hmm. so absolutely we're going towards, again, establishing a nat- network. See, people don't realize they, they don't they don't understand the difference between like a YouTube page versus the actual network. See, networks, you got to buy satellites. You got to you got to buy buildings. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the, the path towards a network is vital and we're definitely going in that direction. But in the meantime, I just want to get a culture. A, a, a little story about Soul B and kind of take it from there. Okay, so the documentary is but Flash. By the way, you a citizen, man. Thank you, Flash. Appreciate it. Hey, you, hey, sway in the morning. Okay, uh, so you're working on the doc. Um, mm-hmm. I can't wait to see that happen. Today is the first annual Soul B Day in Oakland. Where is it taking place and who's going to be there? We got it at the uh, Busy Wife, located at 44. Um, Webster Street and uh, Jack London Square, for those who know downtown Oakland. And, uh, it, you know, man, uh, I, was, I talked to a lot of a lot of people behind the curtain. Hopefully everybody show up again. This is a free event, you know. Um, bottom line is we, we, we talked with from the, the mayor to uh, Too Short. Oh, damn, man. He must be. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and, and and just so many other individuals, you know, um, that that's def- definitely supportive of the event. You know, shout out to Money B and, you know, what they're doing with the Digital Underground Day, and they in full support of this. And, you know, it, it's just an array of people that I'm just hoping is going to really c- come show out and support the Soul B movement. And, again, we're going to plan to do more because this literally landed in my lap through a study sway in my, in my project with the documentary. I looked through some paperwork a month ago. And shout out to um, former Mayor Elihu Harris, 
who actually gave the proclamation to Oakland um, with, with Sobe uh, in 1993. Um, you know, he was basically it did this work. And I said, man, should I let this day go by or should we do a little, you know, a little something to just represent the day? So that's what we're doing today. So it's just a, something we just put together for the community. You know, hope everybody do come out who said they was. Absolutely. So be day. Everybody on so be something, man. I remember Hammer used to be on so beat. You know, it, it, it took so beat. Sway, wow. Sway, you, what, I don't remember Sway, do you, you know, uh, Jigga and uh, Dame Dash and Kareem Burst came through East My Mall. And an uh, hour right before them, I just did an interview with Dub seeing Mac 10 in the middle of that 96 bull, bullshit, you know what I'm saying, between the East oh. and West Coast. You know that, right? They uh -huh. they all came through the East My Mall. And I'm able to talk about that in the documentary because I got all of the footage. Yet I got like about an hour interview with Jay. I got an hour interview with them. And it was just the probably the most intense day of me even doing my show because I, I was like uh, right there in the middle for hip hop but I was really in the middle of what was going on. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're just going to show that with, throughout uh, throughout the footage. I love it, man. Hey, Chuck. Uh, hey, well, hey, then, Tracy, y'all want to ask him anything? Yeah. I'm also curious, mm -hmm. like, very specifically mm -hmm. on where the, the name Soul Beat came from. Uh, you know, that was just uh, basically a derivative for uh, for for uh, Mr. Mr. Johnson because uh, his thing was always about keeping the drums, drums beating. You know, um, you know, it's kind of just one of those interconnections to our to our to our people. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That he was just tapping into that vibration about the drums keep beating for us, because you know that was the way we was able to escape. You know what I mean? Because we was we was hitting them drums, giving each other the messages. You know what I mean? Right, mm -hmm. right. Wow, that's deep. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it actually go that. Hey, deep. Hey, did, What's up with you, Yeah, I was well, going to ask. Did y'all play? Y'all, did y'all play all glocks down on Soul Beat? You know what? Like, what, now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 what I what I wanted to ask, what I wanted to ask though to you, Chuck. You know, a lot of times we have the opportunity to talk to artists from the West Coast and different regions of the world, and they always talk about how they used to watch artists from the East Coast and how maybe they were influenced or wondering why they couldn't get things going for them in their particular region. But the in the way that you were doing it um, out with, with Soul Beat on the West Coast, did you used to watch like say maybe a video music box or empty like did you watch mm -hmm. video shows? that were based out of the east coast oh absolutely i mean that's how i got my roots you know shout out to you know fab five freddy to you know what i'm saying the rap cities to of course uh the og ralph mcdaniels i actually met og ralph with chuck one time at a convention in la so so i was aware of him at a very early age and and realized that he was the mark so to speak so me you know swear to tell you we was we was true hip-hop heads but knew all the mob shit, all the street shit, but I was a real true hip hop purist. You know what I'm saying? I really paid attention mm -hmm. to lyricism, you know, and shout out again. That's why I was talking about the, uh, the, uh, you know, the coalition cause, cause I was around these guys who was, you know, serious hip hop guys. So bottom line was I was into South music and East coast music. And that was just our Bay area flavor. We was willing to give, to give the others a try. So that's that's just was my the way I did my show, and at the end of the day, that's what I want my show. When you see this footage, because you're gonna see my playlist that I had a, a big mixture. I played local, but we definitely had our eye on on the national viewpoint. It is, man. Chuck Beautiful. Johnson, citizens, big Beautiful. round of applause for what you're doing, brother. Keep that name alive. Keep that legacy alive. Soul Beat Day, uh, you know, if you're in Oakland, you're in entertainment, you're creative. Uh, if you're new to the game, if you're fresh out of high school or in college and you want to learn and be a part of something that's just amazing, a part of an amazing legacy. Tonight, man, from 6 p.m., right. right, to 12 a.m., um, if you're in yeah, Jack yeah, London Square. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you want to learn more about us, go to Soul Beat TV on our Instagram and SoBeatNetwork.com. Hey, Chuck, love you, brother. Stay 10 toes down, man. The town needs you. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, ladies. Okay, happy Soul Beat Day. Give it up to Chuck Johnson, man. Make sure y'all follow Soul Beat TV. Man, have a good time, Chuck. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Count black.